Today we're going to learn about the fourth way to solve enthalpy problems, and that's called Hess's Law. So far we've learned three of the five ways, calorimetry, that's where, or Q equals M cat, so you're looking for two different temperatures, you're looking for the word calorimeter or um, a specific heat value given. Stoichiometry, hardest ones to figure out, but usually there's a mass or um, moles given with a balanced equation. Products minus reactants, they're going to tell you to look at the, um, heat, the standard formation um, values, they're going to look, tell you to look at the table, um, they're going to give you some sort of information or clue to look in your back of, your, back of the book. Today we're going to look at the new is, or the fourth um, method and it's Hess's Law um, and what you look for when you're going to use Hess's Law is multiple reactions that could potentially add up to the final overall. It's almost like steps in the process. So if there's a chemical equation um, or a chemical reaction that you can see a series or a sum of different series or steps, then the delta H of reaction for the overall balanced equation is the sum of the delta H for each step. That is the definition of Hess's Law. So let's see what that means, how can we use it to help us solve these problems. So here's a typical Hess's Law problem. It says, here's the following data, and they give me two reactions with a delta H value for each of those reactions, and they want us to find the delta H for the reaction at the bottom. So we're going to use Hess's Law to solve this problem. Similar to when we did reaction mechanisms and kinetics, the goal is to get these two reactions to add up, these two, to add up to th this final overall equation. So what, my first decision was to reverse the given reaction. So if you look at the last slide, one of the, that top reaction was N2 plus 2O2 makes two NO2s. I'm going to flip that. So I put my 2NO2 as my reactant and N2 and 2O2s as my products. If you flip a reaction, the delta H value stays the same in magnitude, but you'll notice now I put a negative sign in front, so the sign is changed. Okay, so the goal is now to find the delta H for the overall reaction. And so we're going to cancel things out that we see on both sides. So if it's a product and a reactant, we're going to cancel it out. So for example, I see N2 is a product and a reactant. They cancel out two oxygens, two oxygens, and my other two things cannot cancel. Well, does that add up if I added these steps up? Well, two NO2s, this guy. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add those delta H values together. Negative 68 plus 10 gives me my delta H of the overall reaction, which is negative 58 kilojoules. So the two steps that make up the final um, reaction, you can add the delta H of the steps together to give the final. So here it is just one more time. You can see where I canceled out. I tried to use colors to match. Okay, before we try our own with delta H values, um, I want to give you a little practice on seeing reactions that add together and figuring out what you need to do. Do you need to flip reactions or reverse um, or multiply or divide the coefficients? Um, so I'd like for you to try on your own. Again, no delta H. I want you to try to mess with these three in some way, shape, or form. They need to add up to that overall reaction. So see if you need to reverse things, double, cut in half, whatever you got to do so that when you add it all up, everything cancels except for Mg plus one half O2 makes MgO. So my strategy with this is I look for unique things. So MgO as one product stood out to me and I see out of all of these reactants and products, MgO is only there once and it's on the reactant side. So I decided as a first step to flip or reverse my top reaction. So that's right here. So I now have MgCl2 plus H2O, those are my reactants, and then MgO plus 2HCl. You can follow what I canceled out, MgCl2, MgCl2, water, water, um, H2, H2, 2HCl, 2HCl to get only what's left is M magnesium, half an oxygen, MgO. So even though we didn't have delta H values for each step, I wanted you to get in the habit of what are we going to do, what do we need to manipulate to get this to work. So Hess's law says that the sum of the enthalpy for all the steps in a reaction add up to the total enthalpy for the overall, 
reaction. So just so you know, for the steps, if you reverse or flip a step like we did in the last problem, that changes the sign of delta H. So if you had a positive, delta H becomes negative. Um, if you multiply the coefficients, so say like you double everything in one of the steps, so now instead of 1 and 1 and 1, it's 2, 2, 2, or 2, 4, 6, whatever you started with, you're going to multiply whatever you do to all of the coefficients in the equation, you're going to multiply the delta H for that step by that coefficient. So here's a typical Hess's Law problem. I know it's Hess's Law because I see one overall big balanced equation and we're looking for the delta H of that reaction. And then I see multiple steps that could hopefully add up to this overall reaction. So when looking at this guy, um, I always look for the unique things and I've really never seen um, carbon written as just graphite. Usually it's just like solid or liquid. Um, and I see that here. I notice that there's a three in front. So my first step is I'm gonna multiply, oops, I want this to be a pen. Sorry guys. I wanna multiply this one by three. And then I see, ooh, interesting, iron by itself here, iron by itself, but we only have half as much in the overall, 4-Fe solid and 8-Fe solid. So I'm going to flip and half my second reaction. Okay, so for the top one, I'm going to multiply all of the coefficients by 3 and multiply delta H by 3. For the bottom one, I'm going to reverse the reaction and cut the stoichiometry in half, which means I change the sign of my delta H and cut the delta H in half. So I did both of those things for you guys in orange. And if you look at the delta H, I put three times the delta H of the original, and then I did half times the positive version of the delta H for the bottom one because we flipped that one and cut the stoich in half. I cancel out everything that can cancel, which is three oxygens on the left and three oxygens. Double check that it matches up to the overall balance. And then we're just going to add those together. So three times the negative 393.5 plus half times 3296.8. I get my final answer for this overall reaction. The delta H is positive 467.9 kilojoules. So this is an endothermic reaction. All right, this one. I know it's Hess's Law because I see an overall reaction and they want us to find the heat of vaporization. Remember, heat of vaporization is the amount of energy it takes to go from the liquid to the gas stage or the gas to the liquid stage. So it's an, if you look at this balanced equation there, that we're going for, H2O liquid to H2O gas, instead of calling this the heat of reaction, they just chose to call it the heat of vaporization, but really it is the heat of reaction for this reaction that's that's listed. Anyways, I know it's Hess's Law because I see that overall, and then they've also given me some steps, and I can already tell that a lot of this is going to have to cancel because of how simple my overall reaction is. So let's see what we need to do. I'm going to look for the H2O liquid this guy, and I see it right here um, on the product side. So right away, before we do much, I know that I'm going to have to at some point flip this top reaction. So I'll flip the reactants in the products. It'll change the sign of delta H. And I also notice that there's um, only a 1 in the overall balance equation, and I have a 2 here. So I'm going to flip and half this reaction. So that will change the sign of delta H and cut it in half. And my other reaction, I see, I'm looking for that other product. It looks like we might have it here, H2O gas, right here. It's a product, so that's good. But there's two of those also. So I'm going to cut this reaction just in half. No flipping necessary, but I'll have that reaction as well. So I've worked this out for you guys. I flipped and have the top reaction, so that's why you see delta H is going to be half of the positive version. It's not negative down here. I changed the sign because I flipped it, and just half of the other, um, the second reaction. Almost everything cancels out. You can double check on me, but everything cancels out except for H2O liquid, making H2O gas. So I'm just going to add those new delta H's together, and I get a heat of reaction as positive 44.1 kilojoules. All right, this is the one that you get to try on your own, so pause the video. Um, I will put the answer on the next slide. Hopefully you're celebrating right now because you got positive 156.5 kilojoules or kilojoules per mole. Um, Either one's fine. So 
If you did not get that answer, I put some clues of what I did to get that answer here. Maybe start there and see if you, um, you flipped and halved everything that needed to be taken care of. And let's see if we can correct our answer if you got it wrong.